In this final geometry crash course video, we're going to be talking about concepts that uh, math team members should know for sure. These are usually outside the realm of high school geometry, but nonetheless, we need to know them. So, first one is a simple one that we've probably gone over lots of times. When you have an equilateral triangle, as all angles, all sides are the same, um, the area of this triangle always equals, if this is side length, side squared radical 3 over 4. We should just memorize that one. It can be derived in multiple ways. Um, so then a more general formula that we should know that we derived once was the area of any regular polygon. That is, all side lengths the same, all angle measurements are the same. And the area of any regular polygon is given by 1 fourth n s squared over the tangent of 180 over n. So s is the side length. n is the number of sides it has. So for the triangle, it would be 3. For a hexagon, for example, here it would be 6. And tangent 180 over n measured, this angle right here measured in degrees. If you want to measure in radians, replace your 180 by pi. But we'll keep with degrees for now. And let's just test this really fast. So let's go to the top equation and put a square, for example, with side length 10. So we know already the area is 100, right? Uh, so let's put our formula instead. So 1 fourth times n, four sides on a square, s squared is 100 over tangent of 180 divided by 4 is 45. And so we can get rid of this formula. We'll see that this 1 fourth and the 4 cancel out, so they're gone. Uh, tangent of 45, for those of you taking trigonometry, is 1. So this just becomes a 1, and we're left with 100, and that's the right answer. So again, let's write the formula one more time. Area of the regular polygon is equal to 1 fourth, our n, s squared, over tangent, 180 degrees over n. Okay, we should memorize that one. It'll help a lot in future competitions. Uh, other things math team members should know is we're going to go over what different locuses are, or loci, I guess, I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, remember how we talked about a circle being the locus of all points that are the same distance away? So, for example, there's some other ones. So, for example, let's go over the ellipse. The ellipse looks like this, and characteristics are it has two foci, F1, F2, and each point, when you add up the focal radii, so this distance and this distance, let's say that distance is d. d is always the same no matter where you are. So the sum of these two is d, the sum of these two is d, sum of these two is d, even if you're lined up with the foci. The sum of this length and this length is d. So that's for the ellipse. And we can actually demonstrate that really fast. I have a little setup over here. So I have a board with two pins in it. How you make an ellipse is you take a string. These two pins act as the foci. So we're going to take a marker. And we're going to pull the string tight. And this is the sum of the focal radii, right? These two. And notice that that's always staying the same. As I draw this, I'm pulling the string tight the whole way. Finish that. Now I'll take the pins out of here and we're left with a nice ellipse. And we can see where the pins used to be. Here, here, F1, F2. And each point is the same distance away from both, no matter where that point might be. Okay. So then we'll go over one more type of locus. So the hyperbola, which looks like two two infinite branches that go away from each other. It could also be vertical, but I do a horizontal one. The foci are outside, so F1 and F2. So any point on here, the difference, not the sum, the difference of the focal radii, so this one and this one. So if you take this minus this, that is the same for every point. And of course, we'll have to do absolute value because on this branch, for example, it's negative. So absolute value of, we'll call it um, D1, D2, so, absolute value of d1 minus d2 always equals some constant d. So that's how hyperbola is defined. It's all points such that the difference of the focal radii such that d is the same. So that's 
more specific type of loci, locuses that we need to know. And the next thing we'll talk about will be platonic solids. So platonic solids, there's only, whereas there's an infinite number of regular polygons, for example, I could draw a triangle, I could draw a square, I could draw, you know, I could draw a pentagon, hexagon, I can draw an infinite number of those. There's only five regular solids, that is, that have all faces the same, that have the exact same number of uh, faces meaning at each vertex, and they, basically they're called the fair dice, such that if you can roll them, the probability of each face coming up will be the same, right? We know the cube is one of them for sure, but also the tetrahedron is one of them, because if you roll a tetrahedron, it's the same probability of having each face come up. So those are two of our platonic solids. Tetrahedron a cube cube also known as also known as the hexahedron. But it turns out that there are three more. So one of them is the octahedron. It's basically two square pyramids stacked on top of each other. Well, one is inverted. So it looks, something, looks a little something like this. So the octahedron has triangular faces that are equilateral triangles, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. That's the octa in octahedron. It turns out there are two more of them, and these two are difficult to draw, so I actually printed them out. So these two. This one right here has equilateral triangle faces as well, and it has 20 of them. So. This one is called the icosahedron, and this one is called the dodecahedron. It has pentagonal faces, it has 12 of them. And something to note about all the tonic solids, like we saw in the previous video, that this holds for them. Faces plus vertices minus edges equals 2. But something to also note, we're going to go a little bit into topology here, is that that formula holds for any deformation of these shapes. Therefore, if you take these shapes and deform them so that you can... Uh, the idea of deformation works like this. If I have, let's say, a tetrahedron, and I pull it and I twist it and I open it up, I can actually make a sphere. One way to think about that is if you have some clay that's shaped in tetrahedron, you can easily like remold that clay to form a sphere. And because of that, it's really cool. Faces plus vertices minus edges equals two for the sphere. That's a weird idea to think about, but it's true because of the deformation principle. Now that works for everything. We can make a more general thing that says for any type of solid, faces plus vertices minus edges always equals some, some kind of constant called chi. It's Greek letter called chi. And for our tetrahedron, our sphere, our other platonic solids, chi equals 2.